we now welcome all for the second time this season from Cincinnati.com, Cincinnati Inquirer, Tyler Dragon. Tyler, thanks for taking the time again. Thanks for having me on. Second time this season. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, welcome. Well, first of all, what we would like to know is we're hearing about some turmoil uh, coming out of Cincinnati. Imagine that after after a loss, right? But uh, we're, we're hearing some things about, you know, disgruntled veterans and things like that. So what can you tell us about that? Yeah, you know, Carlos Dunlap got demoted a couple weeks ago for their game in Baltimore, and he's not really taken that well. Um, he's there's trying to switch his role and have him be a third down specialist. Um, as we uh, all know, he's been a two-time Pro Bowler. He's been a stable on Cincinnati's defense for several years, and he's really uh, frustrated with uh, that demotion. The Bengals, on top of losing, two of their most uh, recognizable players are unhappy. So, Tyler, catch us up, if you will, on what has been going on with Joe Burrow since we last saw him here, and, uh, you know, just how has he come along? How has he, has he progressed? And we know he's getting hit a lot. So, uh, you know, we're a little worried about him that way. But, uh, yeah, just kind of give us the, the lowdown on Joe. Yeah, uh, you're right. Entering uh, week seven, he's been sacked the most in all of football. You do not want to see that from your number one overall pick and the player you believe is your franchise quarterback. But he has developed over the last uh, several weeks. You know, he's uh, developed better presence in the pocket. He scans the field really well for a rookie quarterback. You know, each and every week there's five, six different receivers catching passes for the Bengals. He still, his uh, field vision, maybe sometimes uh, he gets a little bit tricked if there's zone uh, blitzes or, you know, defensive coordinators kind of disguise their uh, blitz packages. We saw in Indianapolis, he threw a game altering interception at the very end when they were trying to rally back. So there are some rookie moments, um, you know, sometimes, but He's as, uh, as advertised. I believe it's no doubt that he's the best rookie quarterback that came out of the 2020 draft, and he's playing like it. When you look at this matchup, uh, obviously we saw the game-changing play that Miles Garrett made when he got in there uh, and, and stripped Joe. So, you know, just now when you look at it, from what you've seen the Browns have gone through since then, what you know uh, Joe Burrow has gone through, what are you seeing about the matchup, uh, him against Miles and that D line. Well, the whole offensive line is going to be aware where Miles Garrett is. And that week two mashup, he was switching all over the defensive line. That strip sack, he was actually a defensive tackle there. So Jonah Williams, Trey Hopkins, and the rest of the Bengals defensive line know he's going to be moving around a lot. And so they're going to be all aware of where he is. Joe Burrow said during his press conference this week that the offense has to be cognizant of where Miles Garrett is because he's a game wrecker. He wrecked the game in week two and they expect him to you know have an impact but they're trying to limit <laughs> his overall impact he had nine pressures I believe in that week two game including and then that sack so he was all over the uh, Bengals backfield so they're hoping that they could contain him much better in week seven at Paul Brown Stadium what do you think the Bengals defense can do against Baker and and what about that matchup well, they want to put the heat on Baker Mayfield. We know that once he gets pressure on him, he turns into an inaccurate passer. I believe he's only completing a 40-some percent of his passes under duress. So the Bengals want to utilize Carl Lawson. Hopefully you know, <laughs> they get things situated with uh, Carlos Dunlap and Geno Atkins because those are pretty much their best pass rushers. Uh, Sam Hubbard is on IR with an injury. So those are their three best uh, interior rushers and outside rushers. So getting the heat on Baker Mayfield is going to be key for the Bengals because he's erratic with the football once, you know, he's under duress. So that's the big key for the Bengals. And they haven't had much luck putting pressure on the quarterback this year. And that's really surprising because last year it was obvious that their defensive line was the key to their defense. This year, their defensive line has taken several steps back and they have not made much of an impact this year. What do you think just about, you know, the intangible aspect of where they are mentally kind of heading into this game? Well, mentally, you have some players saying that, you know, they're not pushing the panic button and they're, you know, they're still in a division. 
And then on the other side, I'm hearing veteran players are frustrated over losing and losing and losing. I mean, Zach Taylor's only won three games in the last two seasons. So as far as your question, I think I'll actually that they need to rely on Joe Mixon if he is healthy. He had a career high 162 rushing yards against Cleveland last year. So he has found success against the Browns of late this year wasn't so much in week two but Joe Mixon does like the matchup against Cleveland and then for Joe Burrow rely on that running game and then build and marry that with the pass you know he threw a career high 61 passes in week two they need a much more balanced offense to be successful you cannot be one-dimensional and win football games he has averaged the most pass attempts per game and that's just not going to get it done, especially when you have a running back at the caliber as Joe Mixon. So the Bengals are hoping that right foot is healthy because they want to utilize him in the backfield and have him be the key to their success on Sunday. All right. Well, we are going to put you on the spot now. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you're ready to make a pick for this game yet, but if you are, who do you have? I have the Browns winning. That's a shocker, right? <laughs> 31 to 24. Uh, I just think that, you know, the Bengals, they're, you know, they're frustrated in the locker room right now. They're in a rebuild mode and Cleveland's coming off a terrible loss versus Pittsburgh. So I believe they'll be extra motivated and point blank. They just have more talent than this Bengals team right now. So I think the uh, Cleveland Browns pull off the uh, season sweep and win the Battle of Ohio round two.